Hi guys! Happy Saturday. It's a gorgeous day here today. Sun is shining. It's nice and cool. A few clouds. It's perfect. You can tell that fall is coming and I'm loving it. I don't like the heat. I don't do well in the heat and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the leaves change here because it's always beautiful here in the fall. So last week uh, was a bit of a milestone. It was our 10th live and uh, I gotta say you guys have been amazing showing up every Saturday. I'm so grateful that you come to play and uh, Decor gave me a pile of goodies to give away last week. Uh, for last week's live and we have winners and they are Sharon Cook, Keiko Umeda, Mary Arnold, Cheryl Overgaard and Avis Randall. Ladies, your goodies will go out in the mail on Monday. Make sure that you send me your shipping information so that we can take care of that for you. And thank you so much for watching and for sharing. I really do appreciate it. Got a lot to cover today. This is a really fun piece to do, this Zen Dragonfly with the painted rose. It's very easy to do. This is a great one to do with the grandkids because honestly, they can do it. You don't need to paint this. You could use uh, watercolor markers, you could use markers, you could use pencil crayons, you could use whatever you like. Uh, but it is really fun to paint and it's very easy. So I think we're just about ready to get started. So the piece we're working on is the Zen Dragonfly. That's the, the blue rose with the metallic looking dragonfly. And to get started, we have to uh, put a stencil detail on this background. And I seem to have lost my painter's tape. Um, let me see. Oh, okay, the cameraman's gonna go get it. <laughs> So the stenciling technique that we're going to use is using three different colors of metallics. We're going to use, um, I'm using the Extreme Sheen. So we've got the 24 karat gold. I have Peacock Pearl from the Dazzling Metallics and I have Bronze. Now there's, you can use any metallics you want to. If you want to use purple and gold, knock yourself out. You can use whatever colors you like. But these are the three that I scrounged out of my painting cabinet. So this is what we're going to use today. So you need about eight inches of painter's tape for this. I'm a klutz this morning. And you're going to lay this tape to form a border of about two inches wide. So double the width of the tape, just like that. And then just burnish it with your fingers so that it lays nice and flat. Now I have the stencil that I'm using is this one. This is the half inch Harlequin. This is one of my favorite stencils. I just love this pattern and it lends it so well, lends itself well to a variety of projects. So I tend to use this one quite a lot. So I like to position my stencil so that you know it cuts that first row of diamonds in half or you only get a portion of it and I always take the edge off the page just to give the, in, the impression that the design continues elsewhere. So I have this firmly taped in place. Now I'm going to load my palette I'm going to use a, just a small amount of the 24 karat gold. I like this little window in the corner of the screen that shows you how I'm loading my palette and also how I load my brushes. It just, everyone seems to like that, so we decided to keep it. And a little bit of bronze. Now, today's live will go up on YouTube probably later this afternoon. So don't forget, go like and share this because we have a giveaway today and uh, go to the YouTube channel and hit the subscribe button. And uh, we have a give giveaway there as well. So I'm going to start with my Dynasty Stencil Pro. This is my, one of my favorite stencil brushes. Okay, so circular fashion, blend it out on the palette and then blot on some paper towel. And you're just going to randomly put some gold on your stencil. Sort of hit and miss. I don't want it on every diamond and all over the diamond. I just want a little bit everywhere. And then I'm going to take that dirty stencil brush and pick up a little of that 
peacock teal and I'm going to do the same thing. Just put a little of that color here and there, randomly around the surface. I chose the peacock teal because that blue sort of works with the blue in the flower. I wanted to carry that color around, so I put a little bit of that blue metallic in this piece. And then, again, with the dirty stencil brush, I'm picking up a little bit of that bronze. That bronze is a little brighter, so you can be a little more selective about where that goes. If you really want it quite bright in places, that's fine. Just put a little here and there. So I think I've got that about where I want it. So I'm going to remove my stencil, but before I do, I'm just going to flip it over to check to make sure that I've got it, the design well covered. So I can remove it. And then I'm going to move it down and then line it back up with the first two rows, like so. And I'm going to repeat the process. So first with the gold, randomly. And then with that peacock teal, such a pretty color. Just sort of hit and miss. And then again with the bronze. And this is sort of that last color that sort of fills in any little gaps or empty spaces. And I'll check. Yep, that looks good. So now I can remove my stencil. So what I like about this is if I move this in the light, you get different colors, different casts. Kind of gives you that oil stained or variegated metal look. Okay, so our next step is to put in a border. Now for that, I need my trusty steel ruler and my gold leaf pen, my gold paint pen. Now this is, this one is from Oshida. This is a deco color premium. This is their gold paint pen. These are available on Amazon. And they are also available on michaels.ca and michaels.com. They run around $10 a piece. These are really great um, gold paint pens. They are really nice quality gold metallic paint in them and they dry fairly quickly. Not as fast as acrylic, but almost. I really like these, this one. So, and this one has that chisel point, which comes in handy for doing this kind of thing. So I know you probably expect me to put the ruler like this to do my line, but I'm not going to because I want a nice crisp, clean line and I don't want a really wide one. So I'm going to put it on that side of the tape and just leave a small narrow space between the edge of the ruler and the edge of the tape. And then take the pointed end of that paint pen and run it between the two nice and straight. Now close that. So what I've done is I've used the ruler to get a nice straight line and I used the tape to mask the edge of this and this is why. So when I remove that tape and I pull that paint back. Look at how nice, clean, and straight that line is. Simple little trick with masking tape to get that nice, clean finish. So we've established our background for our floral. Now, if you chose to do the, the rose in a red color instead of the blue, then I would choose something with a reddish tone so instead of using the blue perhaps use a copper or one of the colored metallics that has a little bit of red in it um, just so that the background is customized to the colors palette that you've chosen for your flower so we're ready to move on to our next step and this is so much fun because this is where things get really interesting so the product i'm using next is uh, decorate's matte medium and I've taken my line drawing from my pattern and I've cut it out. 
and I get as close as I possibly can to that line. I like using little decoupage scissors for this because there's a fair amount of little details. Um, one of the, I don't know, a craft knife or something would work too, but I found that the decoupage scissors work much better. So you just cut it out as close to that line as you can get. Don't worry about getting it utterly perfect, but as close as you can get. The last stage that we do with this is going to alleviate a lot of those little spaces that you're going to fuss about, so don't worry about them too much. There we go. So here is our cutout flower. So now we're going to decoupage that line drawing onto the surface using matte medium. So I have a fugly brush. I know they're sold out everywhere right now. Um, we are waiting for some. So I'm going to put a layer of the matte medium over the entire surface, not just where the flower is going. I'm going to put it everywhere. And it's a nice even coat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but fairly uniform, at least, uh, you know, equal amounts everywhere. So, and brush that over the whole surface, like so. It's nice and uniform. And we're going to put this in here, but the first thing we're going to do is get this wet. So I take that into my water dish. You can have a little bowl of water sitting next to you for this. But get the whole paper really wet. And then decide where you're going to place it. I like to have that stem going off the bottom. I'm going to take a sheet of paper towel I'm going to blot that a little bit. It's a little too wet. Just a single sheet will do me. Camera gun's really ha handy to have around today. So I'm just going to blot that because I have a little too much water in there. There we go. So once it's blotted, I'm going to take that same brush with a little bit, little bit of matte medium and you're going to brush over the paper. just like that. Now I know that you can see that line right through it, but once this paper is completely dry, you won't be able to see it at all. Just like so. So then all you have to do is set that aside to dry, and then when it's completely dry, the paper will be snow white, and it will be nice and clean, and it'll be smooth and tight to the surface. So I have one prepped right here. I actually enlarged mine a little bit for this one. And then in hindsight, kind of regretted it. I wish I had left it the original size because the um, dragonfly seems a little um, overdone by this. This one is just a tad too large, but so um, it's good enough to work with. So I have a mouthful of tea. <laughs> I need to refresh myself a little. And then we're going to start adding color to this. Now the colors in the pattern called for cobalt teal, which is that beautiful turquoise color in the fluid acrylic. And it called for Prussian blue. I am out of Prussian blue, so I'm going to work with cobalt blue hue, which is a dark blue. We have to do leaves, so it's going to have a little green gold and a little sap green. And then just to keep everything from getting a little too cold, I'm going to have a little bit of primary magenta, which is that deep red. So this part is really very simple. I mean, earlier I told you that you could do this with colored pencils or with crayons or with watercolor or with whatever you have on hand. And I'm working with this medium point wonder, which is very much like working with a crayon. I got it wet and I'm going to start with that cobalt teal. 
and I put a little of the color just on the tip of the brush and then work it into the brush so that almost like you're going to float with it. And in all of these shaded areas, you start working that color in. Like so. It's just like working with a crayon. So all that color goes into those dark areas. Wherever that cross hatching and those dots are is where that color goes. So I've got a little of that cobalt teal. I'm going to pull a little of I like these brushes because I can pull that color out very softly and it gradually fades out to the edge of the petal. And you do the same thing for each one of these petals. Keep the darkest value towards the inside where all of that darker lines are and the lighter values to the outside edge. Except in here we have a little flip over that needs to be darker. Got two questions. Okay, somebody's got a question. Could you paint the rose before decoupaging? Absolutely. But to be honest, the paper tends to buckle and ripple and then it's hard to get it to lay flat afterwards. Um, I really like putting the paper on then it's nice and tight and then you have a nice rigid surface to work on. Is the name of the brush you're using? The brush that I'm using <laughs> is an IPC point blender. If you are looking for these, they come, they're available in three sizes. The ones that I use the most are the medium and the large. I do sometimes use the small, but more often than not, um, the medium and the large are the ones that I'll turn to, mainly because the sizes, um, the points work in very tight spots. So I, you know, the medium and the large work just perfectly. Um, and if you're looking for them, the brush guys are sold out at the moment. Um, I'm sorry to say they are getting some more in, but at the moment they don't have any. If you're looking for them, MaureenBaker.com. That's MaureenBaker.com. She still has some in inventory. So you can see that this actually works up very quickly. And this point blender... It's like a crayon, but you can literally float color with it. It's such a great brush. So I've got a little of that blue in, so I want to start picking up a little of this cobalt teal, this cobalt blue hue, because this is my darker value. I'm going to pull that color in to those deepest areas. This is going to deepen all of my shadows. And again, I can walk that color out just by using that whole side, a whole belly of that brush. Makes painting fun because it's like working with a big crayon. And of course, with the fluid acrylics, the more layers you put on, the deeper the color gets. And because they're transparent, they never really get fully opaque. They just get deeper. Now, if you wanted to play with this a little bit, there is nothing to stop you from, say, pulling in a little bit of, um, let's say, a dioxazine purple would be pretty in this, too, to deepen shadows and to deepen colors if you wanted to. And if you wanted to switch this to a red color palette, um, you could pull in the primary magenta and the quinacridone magenta and perhaps a little bit of the pyrrole orange and that would give you a nice bold red rose as well. So there's a lot of flexibility here. You don't have to be working with the same color palette as I am. If you're not particularly fond of blues, you could work with whatever color palette you want to. And I love this blender. Look at how easy it is to move color around with this. I'm gonna come back up here. There's nothing to stop you from changing the colors in something like this. So if it calls for three values of blue, then just switch it over to three values of red that are gonna work for you. 
I have an example here. I have it all prepped for the final stages, um, but I want to show you what the same design looks like in a red palette. The color is very intense. I brought out the original base color, which was the primary magenta, and I pulled it almost out to the edge of the petals. And then I went back in with the quinacridone magenta to deepen all of these shadows and then warmed everything up nicely with a little bit of that pyrrol orange. And just continued to deepen shadows as I chose. You can pull a little asphaltum in there if you want to. Don't forget, you can always take a little bit of titanium white or warm white and add a touch of a highlight to the edges of the petals as well. So just all I did was change those three base colors in the palette. Yeah, another question. Okay. Uh, what are the bristles made out of in this brush and would it be good for watercolor? Yes. Uh, it is good for watercolor. The brush itself, IPC, stands for Ink, Pastel, and Chalk, which makes it a multimedia brush. It is a synthetic blend, so it's a very soft synthetic, so there's no animals are harmed or used to manufacture this brush. They are 100% synthetic and super, super soft, and they come to a beautiful point. So, cruelty-free. Gotta love it. One of the reasons that I'm so partial to working with Dynasty is that they have an eye to the, the environment as a whole. They consistently donate to organizations to save elephants. They manufacture the handles of their brushes are environmentally sourced so that they come from a renewable source as opposed to, you know, just knocking down a bunch of pretty trees. Um, and then the hairs that they use are almost exclusively synthetic. They do still make a few natural brushes, but when they use a natural hair, they are passively collected, meaning that the animal is never harmed in the collection of, of the hair. But no worries. If you are vegan, these brushes are cruelty-free and do not come from an animal source. I love how this is coming together. This blue is so pretty. So this one is actually so simple to paint. I'm going to pull in a little more of those dark blues. I love that cobalt blue. It's so rich. I did a blue rose because it's my daughter's favorite flower. She loves roses and her favorite color is blue. So this comes together very quickly, as you can see. Not a difficult process. Take your time with it. You can have some fun with it too. If you wanted to, do rainbow petals, pink, bright pink roses, whatever you want. It's very, very forgiving. So I'm just about there. I want to in a little more of that beautiful blue. Just about done with this part. There we go. A couple more touches. I think I've just about gotten all the shadows where I wanted them. A little one darker under here. And then I've got this one last one to do right here with that dark blue. I don't want to bury that teal all together. There we go. I'm going to rinse the brush a little because I want to pull a little more of that turquoise, that teal, out to the tips of this petal. So I can go right over that blue that I was on, I was working with before, and come all the way out to the edges of the petal with that teal hue. It's one of the great things about fluid acrylic is that you can layer, layer, layer till your heart's content. 
the colors are very forgiving and they're transparent so you get great tone a little there and a little there I'm just toning those little turnovers and edges in the petals for the next step so I'm going to pull a little bit of warm white this is a great white it's not so cold and hard but it's still nice and bright I'm knocking stuff over today proverbial bull in the china shop so I'm taking a little bit of that warm white and I'm coming out to the edge of the petals. I've thinned it enough that it's not burying the details, but I've got enough of it on there that it crisps up those edges, softens the boundaries between colors and gives us a nice little highlight on the edges of the petals. And you can do the same thing to these areas here. Just take a little of that white, that brighter white, to brighten up those flip overs in the petals. Just like that. So wherever you find that it's just not quite bright enough, you can pop a little bit of that warm white in. And it helps soften boundaries between those colors. So there is our pretty rose. Now the fun part is that I could continue to putz with this and deepen shadows and add other colors as much or as little as I want. That's one of the pleasures of working with this fluid acrylic is that because I can layer those colors without reactivating or pulling them up, I have great control over them. There we go. I'm liking how that looks. So now let's get some life in these leaves. Now I'm going to start with a little bit of water in my blender and this is green gold. See how I'm laying the whole belly of that brush right on the surface. So I'm letting that brush do the work as far as diffusing and walking that color out just like a giant crayon. So I'm going to pull that color along. I'm not filling in the whole leaf. You might have noticed that. I'm leaving some space towards the ends and edges of the leaves. And I'll show you why in just a second. So, there, I've got my color in my leaves, that beautiful bright green. Now I'm going to pick up a little of that sap green, which is that darker color. And this is my shading color. So I'm going to walk that color along that vein line down the center of the leaf. And again, this, most of this color is just on the tip of the brush. You let the belly of the brush do all of the work. The point gives you the accuracy and the belly does the work. Oh, Bonnie Duncan has a question. Bonnie Duncan, what can I help you with? I normally mix pinpoint amount of raw sienna and my titanium white. Is it about the same color as warm white? Roughly, yes, it's pretty close. The warm white has that slight ochre yellow cut. So yes, absolutely a warm white created from titanium white and a touch of Raw sienna should work beautifully. And do you have a source for fluid acrylics? As I am unable to find any, and Amazon is charging eight to thirty-five dollars. Yes. I've tried Michaels and Stockade. Yeah. Your next bet is MaureenBaker.com. She stocks all of the colors. Uh, Tracy, when? dry do the fluid acrylics no longer move no they stay put when you put these things on and the color is dry they don't go anywhere they don't reactivate with moisture and they don't reactivate when you put more paint on that's why you get that ability to layer so many different colors one on top of the other 
So I've got a little sap green in there to shade the leaves. Now I want to give these leaves a little punch of heat. So I'm picking up just a tiny amount of primary magenta. I love this color. I love having a little touch of red in the leaves too. And I'm just putting a little bit in and I'm going to let the belly of the brush walk it out. And that belly is where all of the water is, so it's going to maneuver the color quite nicely. I like a little blush of red in leaves. So if I let that dry and then I can come back to it and deepen the colors wherever I choose. So if my plantation, or no, pardon me, not plantation pie, my sap green isn't dark enough, I can just put another layer on and I can walk that color out and I can detail in places with it. So if I want it a little darker under the flower, I can pull a little more color in and do the stem. Now you'll notice that there's three little spots of white right in here and they're kind of obvious. So I'm going to take my rigger and a little bit of uh, lamp black. I'm going to use some ebony for this. Just a touch. This is the, the fit and finish of things. I like things to have this that nice fit and finish. So I'm just going to paint those black so that they match the background. Like so. There we go. So, I think maybe a little deepening of some of the the green gold. Just gonna brighten that a little bit. Just feel the color needs to be a little bit stronger. So I'm gonna put a little bit more on. Just to round out those leaves. A little more. And I think that's about it. So this part is so simple. Like I said, it's like using a giant crayon. And the colors are so pretty. You can get that cobalt blue makes the prettiest shadows. And the fun part is that I can continue to putz with this as long as I want. I can deepen shadows and walk them out soften things. If I find it's getting a little overworked, I can just take a little bit of that warm white and soften it and then come back in with my color until I'm happy. And customizing this is just so much fun and so easy to do. So now our rose is finished. So we're going to set this one aside to dry and then we're going to work on our dragonfly because that's the next thing that we're going to do. And I have one here. I took a little bit of black gesso to this one because these are very delicate. And they do actually break fairly easily if you're not careful with them. So I based this one with a little bit of black gesso just to make it a little more stable. I'm going to put something underneath it. I'm going to grab a piece of cardstock for underneath this thing. There we go. Here. So the next handy dandy tool I'm going to do is just a little foam uh, pouncer. You can get these at Michael's or they have them at Hobby Lobby. They're, they're inexpensive, they're easy to find and if you forget to wash them you can just throw them out. You're not going to be too heartbroken. So I have my base coated black with gesso and I'm going to pick up a little of that 24 karat gold that we used earlier. And I'm going to just pounce that on like so. Not everywhere. I don't worry about getting it fully covered. You just pounce it on. Neatness doesn't count. Perfection is to be avoided at all costs. 
So I have the gold on. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of that blue. I love how this color melts with the gold. And I just pounce that everywhere. I like to blend it with that gold that's already on there. Okay, looking good. And then I'm going to take a little of that bronze. I think bronze is probably one of my favorite Americana metallics. And I'm going to pop that in wherever the other colors aren't. Just like so. And I like those colors to sort of blend together. Again, it gives you that sort of oil stain type appearance. Now, I had an interesting thought after the fact yesterday that um, wouldn't it be fun to use those Americana Enchanteds? Now, I, my local Michael store has these, and I know that a lot of the Michael stores have them. I think that doing that dragonfly in this would be, ooh, so pretty. So I'm thinking, let's try a little bit of the green. I don't know if it's going to have any effect on this or not, but I wanted to try it. So I've got a little bit of that green on my, ooh, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but ooh, I like it. <laughs> it's sparkly. It picks up that iridescent cast wherever that black is showing. Oh, I like that. That's pretty. So if you haven't tried this, this stuff is fabulous. This iridescent cop coat, it is fabulous. I've been putting it on a lot of things lately. <laughs> but yeah, cool. Okay, so our dragonfly is done. It's just essentially three metallic colors sponged on so that you get this sort of mixture of colors on there. And then just for giggles, I decided to put a, a little bit of that iridescent top coat on top of it. We'll see what it looks like when it's dry. But I'm liking it already. Gives it just a little extra sparkle. Okay, so I'll set this guy aside to dry. Now, one of the things you've got to do um, for your piece is uh, you're going to paint a couple of these. These are little half inch wood blocks. I find these at Michael's and they're in the kids section where they put all of the, you know, the um, popsicle sticks and whatnot. That's where I find these. And so you need two of these uh, if you're doing two of the pieces, but you need one of these to support your dragonfly. And this has to be painted black. So here we go. I have my thing black. So our step with this is to, I'm going to use a little bit of a leans. You can use a glue gun or Gorilla Glue or whatever it is you, you, that you like to use, but I'm kind of partial to my Aileen's. I'm just going to put a little daub of glue on that block. And then I'm going to glue the block to the back of the dragonfly, right in the body, in the center of the body. And oh my gosh, we're going to set this one aside to dry if I can get it off of there. So once it's on there, He's just going to sort of hover over there for a while till he's dry. <laughs> so the next step, now that this fellow is dry, is we're going to use, this is a unique product. This is Pebeo Mixation Relief. And essentially what it is, is it's glue in a tube and it has a fine point applicator at the tip of it. And this stuff is, fairly easy to find. Uh, the last time I saw it, they had it on Amazon. You can find it on Dick Blick as well. Uh, this is great stuff. If I'm not mistaken, um, Mona Lisa actually has a similar product, but it's essentially just a gold leafing glue in a tube. And you're going to trace all of the outlines and details of the petals 
with this glue. It's going to be snow white when you put it on. And you don't need to worry about being perfectly accurate. Remember what I said about those little white lines will disappear. I'm just tracing around the edges of all of this line work and around the outside edge. So if you had that little line of white around the edge of your rose, that's okay. This little thing is going to hide it. So all of the details, even those little lines in the leaves, put a little stroke of that in there. Outline the leaves. Dragonflies come in different sizes. Yes, they do. Um, I have two or three of them around here. I have one with uh, metallic gears in it that I really like. It's slightly larger than this one, but yes, they do come in a variety of sizes. Uh, they're made by um, Southern Ridge Trading at chipboard.ca. You can find them there. I do have some of the gear ones on my site. I do have a shipment coming. Those should be here in the next couple of days. I absolutely love this dragonfly. But if you're looking for them, chipboard.ca is the name of the website. And Karen, Karen Beaupre is the owner of Southern Ridge Trading and she has some of the most amazing surfaces and amazing um, embellishments. She's incredibly talented. So you see things like my chain frame from the um, from Daisy Chain, and um, you know this, the the frame for my uh, bird skull pieces, whatnot, and my barbed wire hearts. Those are all made by Karen at Southern Ridge Trading. She has some beautiful surfaces. And her embellishments are gorgeous. She has a lot of really great detail in them. So you just continue with this all the way around until you have all of the details of this rose outlined, just like so. And again, neatness doesn't really count. If you go off and it's not perfect, who cares? It just makes it more interesting in the end. So this one is almost done. I hate to not finish this. So I'm just going to continue to yak and put my lines in. I love how this looks. I, it just gives it, I don't know. It's fun, it adds a little bling. Now if you really wanted to, if you didn't want to do what we're going to do next, you could actually sprinkle this with glitter, which would be, I think, would be a really cool way to, to decorate this as well. We're going to use a metallic foil for this one, but um, you could absolutely use glitter. I think glitter would be cool. You could do something really fun for, Christmas decorations and whatnot with glitter. I think it'd be really neat. This would be pretty as a poinsettia. Imagine if you had a nice line drawing of a poinsettia. It would be really pretty. Okay, so I have, mine is completely outlined everywhere. And I'm going to set this aside to dry. And it probably takes anywhere from 20 minutes to half an hour, depending on the humidity for this to dry completely. But it does dry crystal clear, which and when it gets to that point, it gets very, very sticky when it's completely dry. So I'm going to set this one aside. And this is my dry one, is this pretty red one. Um, something I like to do is, when I'm finished outlining everything, take this and add some curly cues here and there. And it looks really, really nice. So I've got this done. This one has already been outlined. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It's just slightly shinier than the rest of it. So this is where this product comes in. We're using deco foil. This is from iCraft. Uh, this is 
a set of transfer sheets if I can get it open. <laughs> I'm gonna be wrestling with this now till the cows come home. I'll get the camera guy to open it. Um, and it comes in a variety of, of sheens. This one that I've got here is sort of a hologram look. It comes in a variety of colors, but the one I'm going to use today is the bright gold because I really like this one. And it comes in a sheet. There's five sheets in one of these packages. They're not horribly expensive. So this is what it looks like. I'm going to cut this down a little just because I don't need that much. And it cuts easily with scissors. And then you can just roll up the portion that you're not using and just put it back in the into your tube. These are available on Amazon. Uh, Scrapbook.com also has them, but Amazon is probably your best bet This getting it at a reasonable price. So here you go. You have this foil. It has a gray side and then it has this bright shiny side and it has to be put gray side down. So you just lay it on top of your image and I just use my fingernails to burnish it like so. And essentially you're just pressing it into that adhesive that you just spent you know, 20 minutes putting onto your piece and then carefully pull it back. And you can see the outline of the flower right in the foil and then you can just drop it back into place for the rest of the rose and the leaves and just burnish it into place and you pull it off. Now you can take that same foil wherever there's a gap or a place that didn't quite catch. Just apply a little pressure and it will pick up. So you can go around and touch up very easily with this. So any places that you figure you didn't get enough foil on or if the adhesive didn't grab right away, all you have to do is just press again like in this spot right here with my little curly cues I drew in. Didn't quite grab. There we go. Where do you get fluid acrylics and what brand do you recommend? I use the Decor Media Fluid Acrylics and they are available at MaureenBaker.com. If you uh, don't find the selection you want there, um, you can always go to decoart.com. They also ship as well. And yes, they have begun shipping. And what is the name of the glue you use for the outline? The outline is called, this is by Pebeo. It's called Jadeo, and it's Mixation Relief, which means it's a dimensional adhesive. And can you use a gold leaf sheet? Absolutely. It is not as easy to control as the gold foil, but gold leaf does work. And where did you get the rose? The rose? The rose is the line drawing and it is in the pattern for this project. I simply photocopy it instead of using the original line drawing. And look at that. How's that? That really sparkles quite nicely. I really like how that little touch of the gold foil really pops that flower out. So now I've done that to the rose. I've also put a little adhesive on this dragonfly. And I love how this just makes the wings of this dragonfly pop. And all I'm doing is just pressing it into place in a few places. I just put a few little dabs of the adhesive on the wings here and there. Not a ton, but just a little. I just, you know, bring that gold from the, the rose onto the dragonfly and a little bit down his back. It just gives it a little sparkle. It's fun and it's very easy to do and this is, it's so effective. So when you look at this dragonfly, 
Look at the sparkle in his wings. So the final step to this piece is very simple. You're going to take your Aileen, Aileen's glue and you're going to decide where you want your dragonfly to sit. Now I usually arrange him so that the, his wings slightly overlap the flower and they also come off the page just slightly. So in that little space right here, so I'm going to put a little drop of glue right there. And then I'm going to arrange my dragonfly accordingly. And that, as I say, is that. How's that for a fun piece on a Saturday afternoon? They work up very quickly. They're a lot of fun to do. We're going to go back up. There it was, done. This was not a difficult piece to paint. It is a lot of fun and they're very pretty. You could customize this, throw in butterflies instead of dragonflies or whatever you wanted. It could be a, another flower if you wanted to. That's the great thing about using this type of technique is that you can make it whatever you want. So imagine using daisies and flowers, roses, and whatever you like to create this. All you need is a really great line drawing. Uh, something out of a coloring book would work too. This is fun and I'm so glad that you came to join me today. I do have a giveaway. I do have a giveaway. Somebody is going to win this pattern plus the dragonfly and the stencil. You're gonna get that kit. That will come to you in the mail. And we also have a gorgeous set of the Dynasty Stencil Pro stencil brushes. That's these beautiful red handled stencil brushes. Somebody's going to be going home with a set of those as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. Don't forget to check out the video on Wednesdays or Thursdays in this case, this week on No Makeup Thursday. You can check out the video on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Want to get entered in the contest today? Hit the share button. Leave us a comment. Let us know where you're watching from. Love you guys. Stay safe.